That's my opinion! Well spoken. Well said. <laughs> One book that is definitely the worst book that I read in 2020. I can't remember what happened. I just can't. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I'm here with the video we've all been waiting for, which is the worst books that I read in 2020. There's also definitely a favorite books of 2020 video coming soon on my channel, but I have all of these like end of the year videos that I want to record and I have so little time to edit, so let's just get on with it. Before I'm going to talk about these seven books that are on this list, I have a meme that I want to show you that kind of shows the whole vibe of this video and that is that's my opinion well spoken well said <laughs> everything that i will be talking about in this video is my opinion these are not facts this is how i felt about the books we can disagree it's totally fine take my opinion with a grain of salt also i'm calling this video my worst reads of 2020 because they are but they are not that bad i only have one book one book that is definitely the worst book that I read in 2020, but then the rest of them are all between a 2.75 to a 3 out of 5 stars, which is not bad at all. A 3 out of 5 stars is still a pretty decent rating, and I had a lot of aspects in these stories that I did enjoy, but they just they didn't, you know, hit me in the soft spot right here that is my heart. <laughs> I just watched um, Leonice's Worst Books of 2020 video and she did this in such a nice way. She had different categories for the books that she didn't like, so I'm taking that idea from her. Thank you, Leonie. And I have three categories in today's video, going from like least worst to worst book, I guess. So my first category that I'm going to start off is High Hopes Bad bad outcomes. I do have to say, this is the most controversial category of them all, so like I said, my opinion, don't hate, please. <laughs> I'm gonna start with my most recent read book. I'm not gonna give a really in-depth explanation of why this book was not it for me, because I have a themed reading vlog coming up very soon with it, and that one is... <sighs> The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I know that so many people love this book. They swoon over it. They love the couple. But to me, this was not it. <laughs> to give you like a little bit of a feeling how I felt after reading this book, I was glad that I could pick up something else. And I guess that's not really the feeling you're going for when you want to love a book. We follow Lucy and she's been having like this hating game with one of her co-workers called Joshua. I think this is marketed as like an enemies to lovers type of situation. The enemies or like nemesis as it says on the back factor in this book is not really prominent in my opinion. Right from the get-go you get the feeling that, you know, they aren't really enemies. They just really love to joke around each other and pull pranks on one another. The thing is that they work for the same company and they are kind of battling against this new high position and that's kind of what the story is about and their romance. I mean, it's not a spoiler, right? A romance book, you know what to expect. That's all I'm gonna say for right now. I know it's really vague but I have a detailed opinion like in my reading vlog so I'm trying to keep this a little bit vague so you guys can look out for that reading vlog somewhere in January, February-ish. <laughs> then I have The Girl of Ink and Stars by, what's her name again? I have another book of hers here, by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I do not have a physical copy of this book anymore because I unhauled it. If I look at my list right now, I unhauled four of the seven books on this list already. Getting those Mm, not so amazing reads out of my bookshelf, making space for other things. I picked up this book because of Leonie, actually, because she talked about this book a couple of years ago on her booktube channel. She was raving about it, so I, you know, being influenced by my friends, wanted to pick it up as well, and it was not for me. I don't even really know what the story is about anymore. I think we follow this girl who lives on an island, and the island is kind of separated, and the people are kind of fighting together, and there are some weird beasts on it, and that is all that I remember. I know that in the beginning I was so excited to read it and I was looking forward to the story so much, but somewhere around page 100 I was like, mm, the writing is not really for me. Things happen super, super, super quickly. <laughs> and we just jumped from action scene to action scene and I didn't really feel anything for the characters and I felt like our main character was quite selfish. Next up, I think my most controversial worst book worst book of 2020 and that is you should see me in a crown 
by Leah Johnson. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I do have a lot of aspects in this book that I absolutely adored. I love that this story features a black main character who is part of the LGBTQ community. This is a female to female romance. I love that so much. We need that representation more in books. The thing that bothered me is I did not care for any of the characters and especially the side characters. They blended all into one of the same stereotype. I felt like all of the girls were these typical high school mean girls and all of the boys were these typical high school jocks. And teenagers are not always a stereotype. <laughs> we saw some side characters, but they all felt like one person to me. No one stood out. And also the romance was definitely, for me, a little bit of insta-love and I didn't ship the characters. And if you read a YA contemporary romance novel, I feel like you kind of need that in a story. And the same goes for Date Me Bryson Keller by Kevin Van Wy. This is again a black main character, a male to male, female to female? I said female to female earlier. <laughs> female, female romance and male, male romance. I think I like Date Me Bryson Keller more than You Should See Me in a Crown. And I really like this kind of fake dating thing in YA contemporaries. And that's kind of what Date Me Bryson Keller was about. I don't even remember the main character's name anymore. Oh my God, that's so bad. I think we all have this problem sometimes. So in Fair Phil Academy, the school where our characters in this book go to, Bryson Keller is a really extremely popular boy and he has taken on a bet with his friends that he needs to date a new person every single week. But until so far, no boy has dated Bryson Keller during this bet. And our main character, Kai, is brave enough to ask Bryson Keller out. And then this like fake dating thing goes on. So the premise of this book was super cute. But the thing again is the insta love or for me it felt like insta love i don't really like that when that happens in books that's just like a pet peeve of mine in books so that's the main thing why i didn't really enjoy this story and the same that happened with you should see me in a crown happened in this book and that is the side characters I didn't really care for them at all. I did love the family dynamics in Date Me Bryson Keller. That was just really wonderful, but I wanted to love this book more than I did. Both You Should See Me in a Crown and Date Me Bryson Keller, I gave those three out of five stars. So still not bad at all. And I would recommend Date Me Bryson Keller if you have loved You Should See Me in a Crown because I don't think a lot of people know about Date Me Bryson Keller. My next category is what the f that just happened? <laughs> the first book that falls into this category is Solitaire by Alice Oseman. <clears throat> Little spoiler alert for my favorites video, Alice Oseman <laughs> will definitely be mentioned in that one, but not this book. <laughs> this is also Alice Oseman's debut novel, but the thing is, I really quite enjoyed the first 100 to 200 pages, but then afterwards I was just really confused about the storyline and what was going on, and I honestly didn't understand it. In this book, we follow our main character, Tori, who is the sister of Charlie, and if you have read the Heartstopper series, you know who Charlie is. Love Heartstopper, but we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> I'm gonna look up the synopsis for Solitaire on Goodreads right now because it's so vague. It's so vague. It says here, in case you're wondering, this is not a love story. My name is Story Spring. I like to sleep and I like to blog. Last year, before all that stuff with Charlie and before I had to face the harsh realities of A-levels and university applications and the fact that one day I really will have to start talking to people, I had friends. Things were very different, I guess, but that's all over now. Now they're Solitaire and Michael Holden. I don't know what Solitaire are trying to do and I don't care about Michael Holden. I really don't. That's the synopsis. That's already really vague. But the thing is, I still don't know or can't remember what Solitaire is or was. And it seems like that would be kind of the point about this story, right? And then the second and last book that falls into this category is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Oh my gosh, was this one of my most anticipated releases of 2019? I believe it came out in November back then and I picked it up in January of 2020. I can't remember what happened. I just can't. This conclusion was really quite unsatisfactory. Is that a word? Unsatisfying? <laughs> I won't be talking about the synopsis because obviously a spoiler for the whole trilogy. I know that a lot of people are on the fence about this fantasy fey trilogy. I would call this very light fantasy and the books are more about what happens to the characters and their interactions. Hence why I think maybe I don't really remember how this story ended. It's just that I expected so much more from it and I got so very little. But now we're on to my worst book that I read in 2020 and I call this category 
no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not giving a super detailed synopsis or like reasoning for why this is my worst book of 2020 because again, I have another themed reading vlog coming to you soon. And that is Tell Me Again How a Crush Should Feel by Sarah Verison. Wow, was this not a great book. This is an LGBTQ contemporary with a love story in it, but it was not what I was expecting. I thought I would love this because I love all of these elements in my YA contemporaries usually. This one just did not do it. <laughs> it read so very, very young and some of the things that were said in this book were either kind of fat phobic or just a lot of stereotypes were actually not debunked in this book, but maybe even enforced and I just did not love that at all. What I did love about this story is that our main character is an Iranian American girl so we did have her point of view in this story and I did like that representation but everything about this book besides that just one big no. <laughs> and I was so sad because this book has won so many awards and the rating was really quite good. It's just oh my god definitely the worst book I read in 2020. Those were the seven worst books that I read in 2020 but like I said the only worst book that I read was honestly this one. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree agree with any of the opinions that I gave and if not that's fine we can disagree and also let me know what were your worst books that you read in 2020. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below and hopefully I will see you guys in my next one. Bye! <laughs>